Hi there, and welcome to Network News from the Real Agenda Network. I'm Tom Burgess, and thanks for joining us today. Now, in today's show, you'll hear news and comment relating to organisations in the Real Agenda Network. Here are some of the headlines. Our budget. Well, it's easy if you don't have to. We hear from Tax Justice UK on the Chancellor's Spring Statement. Now, apparently fossil fuels is now on the mainstream agenda. Sorry, reducing fossil fuels is now on the mainstream agenda, says Government Minister. So what action is planned? And how legacy lives on. Two campaigning groups merge to bring more compassion into politics. And the patriotic millionaires call for more tax on wealth. And there's even more podcasts on the Real Agenda Network. We take a quick look. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Real Agenda Network is developing as a media platform that reaches increasing numbers of politically aware and active listeners who want a more democratic, inclusive and fairer society that respects human rights and protects the planet. The focus is on fixing the fundamental problems of our time, reducing inequality, resolving poverty and bringing greater social and economic justice. Because that's the real agenda. I'm Gavin Esler, and I want to see in Britain a more compassionate and just society. And that's one of the reasons I listen to The Real Agenda. So on with the news, and that's the network news. Sunak states the obvious. Since the new year, one issue has dominated people's lives, hasn't it? The rising cost of food and heating. All of us are facing higher council tax and national insurance. The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, who we know really does not have to keep an eye on his own personal bank account, set out his response to the growing cost of living scandal. The Office of Budget Responsibility said the rise in inflation to a 40-year high this year is expected to reduce real household disposable incomes on a per-person basis by 2.2% in 22-23, the biggest fall in living standards in a single financial year since the ONS, that's the Office of National Statistics, records began in 56-57. Robert Palmer, the Executive Director, Tax Justice UK, responded by commenting, saying that Sunak's announcement mostly consisted of tax cuts for middle earners, 5p off fuel duty, a higher threshold for for when national insurance kicks in, and a promised 1p off income tax in 2024. This helps some families, but it's nowhere near enough. Is that it? shouted one MP, towards the end of Sunak's spring statement on Wednesday the 23rd of March. Robert Palmer went on to say it's hard to recall a time when the experts and the media were more united in criticising the Chancellor's performance. Rishi Sunak's announcements will do little to stop the slide into poverty we are about to see. The official figures suggest that people are about to experience the biggest fall in living standards on record, which we've just noted. Rising bills for energy, food and petrol will wipe out much of the tax cuts announced. And as Robert says, decisions about tax and spending are political choices. And despite falls in win- despite calls for a windfall tax on companies like BP, who've enjoyed huge profit, Rishi Sunak sat on his hands. He failed to provide more support to those on the lowest incomes. The Chancellor has done little to close the tax loopholes used by the wealthy. And it's important to see all of this in a broader context. Millions of people face financial insecurity after being denied a real pay rise for decades. Politics is about choices and the Chancellor made the wrong choices this week, says Robert. He prioritised tax cuts on middle earners while ignoring many struggling families. So all that was in a letter from Robert Palmer, Executive Director of Tax Justice UK. (coughs) Moving on. Oil protests. Now, George Eustace, the Environment Secretary, cleverly observed that reducing fossil fuels was now on the mainstream agenda. People don't need to do such extreme protests to make their point heard, he said. And he went on to say that the climate change protesters were wrong to blockade oil terminals so that some petrol stations ran out of fuel. The minister criticised the demonstrations for trying to cause havoc with people's lives saying such tactics would be banned by imminent changes in the law. Yes, but what is the government doing? What is business doing to speed up our journey to net zero? It is too slow, 
and the initiatives are weak and piecemeal. If it's on the mainstream agenda, then more action is required. Why are we still subsidising these fossil fuel industries and not taxing them more to encourage the shift to green? Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary, of course, always has an answer for things, since she let it rip as usual. Hard-working people across our country are seeing their lives brought to a standstill by selfish, fanatical and, frankly, dangerous so-called activists, she said. Yes, Pretty, but listen to what they're saying and realise how it actually reflects the public mood. So we want action. Ms Patel seems to see the answer to a lot of political problems is to lock them up or make more laws. On the same subject, the title of a BBC documentary which was originally broadcast in 2019 but still on BBC iPlayer, which I just watched again the other day, put it clearly. It said, Extinction Rebellion, last chance to save the world. It reveals how Extinction Rebellion has mobilised a generation to take radical action to help save the planet from climate change and said that 2019 marked a change in public attitudes to climate change, driven in part by a huge new global protest. And that's thanks to the co-founders of Extinction Rebellion, Roger Hallam, and friend of the Real Agenda Network, that's Dr Gail Bradbrook. You can listen to Gail on an earlier episode of the Real Agenda. Now, with a slightly more measured tone, the Climate Change Committee has issued an initial response to the government's British Energy Security Strategy, which was published the other day. The Director of Analysis, Mike Thompson, said, the government has doubled down on its net zero strategy by accelerating plans to secure green, clean, UK-made energy. For perhaps the first time, the government has made commitments that clearly go beyond the Climate Change Committee proposals in key low-carbon technologies, offshore wind, nuclear, hydrogen, etc. The new commitments are hugely ambitious, he says. They could see the UK produce more electricity from offshore wind in 2030 than it produced from gas in any year in history. The government, business and industry will need to focus relentlessly on delivery at a scale and pace as yet unseen. Indeed, they will. Recognising the difficulties in implementing effective policy quickly, he said, it is still disappointing not to see more on energy efficiency and on supporting households to make changes so that they they can cut their energy bills now. Yes, please, hurry up. This is not just urgent, but very urgent. This means more funds from government for infrastructure and also more action from business. This is a huge entrepreneurial opportunity to switch to green. Some entrepreneurs see see that, but there's still much more scope. Now, for those who don't know, the Climate Change Committee is an independent statutory body established under the Climate Change Act of 2008. Purpose is to advise the UK government and devolved governments on emissions targets and to report to Parliament on progress made in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and preparing for and adapting to the impacts of climate change. So for many, we want to see more action on climate change so so one can understand the frustration of protesters who don't see enough urgency being applied to the extinction event. Plus, urgent action is needed to help low-income groups in the short term. Our two campaigning groups have now merged to bring greater compassion in politics. The Board of Taxpayers Against Poverty Limited has agreed to merge with Compassion in Politics. This provides a stronger base to ensure the continuation of the inspiring campaigning work of the late Reverend Paul Nicholson, the founder of Taxpayers Against Poverty. The idea of a merger was in fact first proposed by Reverend Paul when he first met the Compassion in Politics team in 2019. He was so impressed with their work and he realised that both groups really shared the same objectives and values. Now, since Paul's death in March 2020, and just a few days after his sit-down protest outside Church House in London, Taxpayers Against Poverty has continued the close partnership with Compassion in Politics. Jennifer Nadel, co-director of Compassion in Politics, said it was an honour to have known and worked with the Reverend Paul. He was truly inspiring and had a relentless drive to end hardship for so many. I'm so pleased that Compassion in Politics will take the campaign for minimum income standards and truly affordable housing, two issues that were close to Paul's heart. The Reverend Paul built up an online following for Taxpayers Against Poverty of nearly 24,000. And nearly two years after his death, that figure is still 24,000, which is a testament to his inspiration. (coughs) Tax Me, I Am a Millionaire is a 30-minute documentary Narrated by Abigail Disney, 
the heiress of the Disney family and a member of the Patriotic Millionaires. It was BB- I was on BBC Radio 4 on Monday the 11th of April and still and will be available on BBC Sounds. And it tells the story of wealth inequality in the UK and features Gary Stevenson and Gemma McGough, two founding members of the Patriotic Millionaires UK, as well as a, a host of other contributors from Philip Hammond to Angie Dale, the local council leader in Rishi Sunak's constituency. The documentary demonstrates how addressing inequality is as is as important for wealth holders as it is for anyone else and highlights the need to tax wealth for a fairer society. And I completely agree. My view is that the key issue is that we all create the wealth, but the system means it's only accumulated by the few. So it seems morally right to tax wealth to ensure that a good portion of it goes back into the public domain for the benefit of all and to pay for the infrastructure, education, health and care services that enable people and business to thrive and to create the wealth which our current system means is only accumulated by the few. And the Patriotic Millionaires UK is a network of British millionaires from multiple industries and backgrounds from across the UK, keen to deliver a shared mission, to leverage the voice of wealth to build a more just, stable and inclusive society, to push for fair taxation and accelerate the end of extreme wealth. Is a sister to Patriotic Millionaires a US organisation established in 2010 with the same mission, of which one of the board members is my friend and fellow author Chuck Collins, who kindly gave a great reference for my book, From Here to Prosperity. Now, Chuck's story is fascinating, as he inherited a huge sum when he was very young. It was a fortune created by his grandfather's meatpacking business, called Oscar Mayer. But Chuck put it all into foundations and spent his career campaigning to reduce inequality. Now, Patriotic Millionaire's UK's unique contribution is to use the voice of the millionaires to publicly advocate for fair taxation to end extreme wealth and against growing inequality. They say do this because our current economic system has become unfair and destructive, a road in trust in democracy. <laughs> now here's a few podcasts you might like that are available on the Real Agenda Network. Shepard Walwyn, that fine publisher of ethical economic series of books, including my book, From Here to Prosperity, and indeed my father's book, Public Revenue Without Taxation, both still available, now have a series of podcasts where they interview authors, which indeed included myself. These episodes are distributed on the Real Agenda Network, and I was pleased to listen recently to Dominic Frisby, the economic commentator and comedian, though not being a Shepard Walwyn author, is a very interesting guy. I had the pleasure of meeting him a few years ago at his house, just about the time my book came out. I was particularly interested in meeting him as, like me, and indeed like Shepard Walwyn, he's a great proponent of land value tax and made a very clear video explaining it. In this episode of the Shepard Walwyn podcast, which he subtitled Why Cuban Fathers Want Their Daughters to Be Prostitutes, he talks about how he became a libertarian and also looks at how well-intended government actions can undermine and even eliminate personal responsibility of citizens they're trying to help and about the importance of the of 1907 to the First World War and why people of every political persuasion don't like the BBC. In a recent episode of the TaxCast from the Tax Justice Network, Naomi Fowler speaks with journalist and anti-corruption campaigner Oliver Buller about his new book, Butler to the World, how Britain became the servant of tycoons, tax dodgers, kleptocrats and criminals. As Oliver says, you cannot have unquestioning acceptance of the wealthy and democracy. You can't treat everyone the same before the law and give rich people anything they want because rich people want to have immunity from the law. Do you want democracy or do you want to be a butler? As I said, that comes from the Tax Justice Network and it's also available on the Real Agenda Network. So that's the news for now on Network News from the Real Agenda Network. Thanks very much for listening. What do you think? You can contact us at info at realagendaradio.org or Twitter at realagendanet or via our website realagendaradio.org. We'd love to hear your views. And if you'd like a copy of my book, From Here to Prosperity, A New Political Agenda for Sustainable Economy and Greater Social Justice, go to fromheretoprosperity.org. And you can listen and subscribe free to the Real Agenda Network of Podcasts for Positive Change on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Google and Spotify and many more.
We know we can achieve change if we work together, so that's what we're doing on the Real Agenda Network. The campaign groups and think tanks whose podcasts we distribute have a collective online following of nearly a million. Our challenge is to make sure that they all listen to the Real Agenda Network. And recent shows that we've, we've included are It's Bloody Complicated from Compass, podcasts from Shepard Warwin, the publisher of the economic, Ethical Economic Series of Books, which we just mentioned, and Across the Benches, a fascinating series of podcasts featuring politicians the government side and the opposition sides, and that comes to us from Compassion in Politics. A special thanks to our sponsor, Switch, the workstation for your browser. Do you find yourself with too many tabs open and losing your place? Try switchextension.com. It's free to download. Save yourself some time. I do. It's great. Now, one thing is certain. People want to see change to a more compassionate and just society as well as more courageous politicians prepared to do the right thing for people over party. It's not happening, but it can. It's urgent, and it's up for us to make it happen. Because that's the real agenda. I'm Tom Burgess. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.